I read a fantasy book written by another YouTuber that has over 1.2 million subscribers. And we're talking about no one else but Andrew, also called Sigils, on YouTube. Now, I probably held the world record for being the only person in the whole world that has read his book without having watched any of his videos. Yes, that is correct. I haven't watched a single video that Sigils has ever made. Now, you might be wondering, how on earth did I hear about this book if I didn't know who Sigils was? Well, the honest truth is that actually Sigils, he contacted me on Twitter and asked if I wanted to review his book. I'm a huge fantasy fanatic and I love reviewing fantasy books. And when I saw another YouTube content creator with over a million subscribers contact me and ask me if I wanted to read his work, I knew I had to say yes. So Andrew very generously sent me a signed copy and I was actually not home in the UK when he sent it so I sent it to the address in the Far Islands which was my dad's address and I love it because he wrote Polly up here which is actually my dad's name. If you're watching this Andrew my name is actually Johan not Polly but obviously you couldn't know this. <laughs> But before I start this book review, I feel like I need to get to know Andrew a bit more, so let's watch some of his videos. Alright, let's see what the hype is about. 1872 videos, that is impressive. Alright, let's go to his most watched videos. I was certain that his most popular videos would be Minecraft, but Among Us is apparently one of his most popular. New scary granny role in Among Us, 1.7 million views. Alright, let's have a look. Hi dudes, welcome back to another scary Among Us mod. Today? We're playing the granny mod in Among Us. The imposter is granny. There's a whole bunch of grannies scattered all over the map and he can teleport to any of them and take control of them. Enjoy the video. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. All right, a lot of energy and a lot of humor. So just from the intro, I can see some of the humor that's, that is in this book is also in his videos. All right, here's a micro video. Today is one of my favorite kind of videos. It's where I get to prank Biffle. Welcome back to more nonsense. Uh, you know, more nonsense. Yeah, more nonsense. Woo! Hit that nonsense button, all right? So technically, I still haven't watched a full video by Andrew, but this has definitely given me enough insight into what kind of person he is. He seems to be very likable, high energy, and seems to be incredibly funny. So before I start the review, I can already now see that this book is probably perfect for a lot of his viewers. So I'll say already now that if you enjoy Andrew's videos and you enjoy reading, then this is probably a perfect match for you. All right, let's start this review. And before I start this book review, I've actually teamed up with Sigils himself to give away 10 audiobooks. So if you want a chance to win a free audiobook, make sure to check out the link in the description down below. We know that Andrew knows how to be a successful YouTuber, but can he also be a successful author? Let's discuss Soul Fraud. Firstly, at the time of recording this video, Soul Fraud has more than 200 ratings on Goodreads, with a staggering average rating at 4.81. Now, that is a very, very impressive rating, and this definitely shows that Andrew has been able to write a book that his viewers really enjoy. Now, as a fantasy fanatic that almost only reads fantasy, do I think that Soul Fraud is a masterpiece? Well, the answer to that is no. But that is not to say that Soul Fraud is not a good book. This is actually an impressive debut. This is one of those books that a particular crowd will absolutely love. And as I said it, it seems like Andrew has done a phenomenal job at finding the correct readers for his book. So let's briefly talk about what I enjoyed about this book and what I didn't particularly enjoy. Firstly, the concept is absolutely brilliant. Soul Fraud is kind of giving me Discworld vibes where the author just fully embraces absurdism. This book basically follows Matthew, who is confronted by a demon. This demon offers Matthew a perfect life for 10 years in return for his soul. So although the offer is tempting, Matthew, he declines. But against his will, the demon fakes the signature and Matthew is suddenly thrust into a different reality that is tailored to all of his needs. But he is going to lose his soul in 10 years time against his own will. Suddenly a new world opens for him where demons and witches and gods and all kinds of weird creatures are a reality. And Matthew is finding himself in a situation where everything has changed. Soul Fraud is like a Alice in Wonderland meets Discworld kind of book. The protagonist falls into this rabbit hole where he can't escape. And then we have so many absurd concepts and humor sprinkled throughout the whole story. So that is my first praise. The concept in this book is really fun and interesting. And Andrew does a really great job at explaining to the reader what is going on. Secondly, this book is incredibly well paced. There are so many twists and turns in this book and each chapter adds another layer of 
tension or world building which I really appreciate. This book felt like a very quick read but it's actually 350 pages and it's incredible how much ground Andrew is able to cover in so few pages. The journey is absolutely insane so even though this wasn't a new favorite of mine I still enjoyed the overall reading experience because Andrew does such a phenomenal job at continuously moving the plot forward. In some ways this kind of felt like reading a video game if that makes any sense or like watching an animated movie. This book is breakneck pace with clear descriptions and everything just flows really well. Third and lastly, the prose and writing style is accessible and easy to follow and read. So if you're looking for a book with beautiful and flowery writing, you won't find it here. But this story really wouldn't fit having beautiful prose. Andrew's writing style is very straightforward, but it matches the tone of the story really well, so I don't really have any complaints there at all. But let's talk about some of the aspects that didn't really work for me. Firstly, this isn't actually a real criticism, but I rarely enjoy fantasy books with lots of humor, so this is not a soul fraud problem per se. This book is filled with lots of sarcastic humor, and the humor is one of the main reasons why people will love this book. But if the humor doesn't vibe with you, then you probably won't enjoy this book as much. Many of my least favorite fantasy books and series, such as Good Omens, Discworld, The Black Tongue Thief, and The Great Coats series, they use humor as a major storytelling element, and I don't know why, but I just don't really enjoy those kinds of books. This isn't a criticism per se, but the humor just didn't vibe with me at all, which is unfortunate. My second criticism is that Andrew decided to take the book into a direction I wasn't particularly a fan of. Due to spoilers, I won't get into details, but the world building and the overall plot just didn't make 100% sense to me. I know we're talking about an absurdist story here, but Andrew never really explained how come that Matthew, he had been promised a blissful life for almost 10 years, but throughout the majority of the story, Matthew is going through life and death situations and is having constant anxiety. Now, that really didn't make that much sense to me. Now, this might have been explained in the book, but I might just have missed that part. <laughs> also, I believe there are two more books coming in this series, so Andrew might answer that specific question in the later books. So again, not necessarily a criticism. But lastly, my main issue was with the characterizations. Unfortunately, Andrew wasn't able to get me fully invested in any of the characters, especially the side characters, which is unfortunate since I am a very character-driven reader. Now, this is not to say that this is not a character-driven story. It definitely is. I just didn't really connect with the characters. Now, I hope that you're starting to see that most of my criticisms are much more related to the book not being a good fit for me as a reader, more than it is a criticism of the book itself. Soul Fraud is a solid debut, which Andrew should be really proud of. I would recommend checking out this book if you're in the mood for either a story that has a very unique concept, is fast paced and has lots of humor. Also, thank you so much to Andrew for sending me a physical copy in exchange for an honest review. Have you ever read any books written by YouTubers? If so, let me know in the comments down below. So most people never watch to the end of a video, but if you're still here, then I have a really exciting sneak peek. Something really, really exciting is coming to my Patreon next month. And I'll just leave a clue here. This is the clue. So sometimes in the next two weeks, I'll make a full announcement. And speaking of Patreons, I just want to say a special thanks to my Patreons who support what I do here. I really, really appreciate it. All right, see you guys.